Hello everyone and welcome to the Terraria Risk Computer Explanation video. Now this took us quite a while to make, partially because we kept getting sidetracked and had other projects, but it was about 18 hours of build time and roughly 16,000 wires individually placed. So there's a lot to discuss, so let's hop right into the message. Now the message is what gets passed into the computer by the user and that tells the computer everything that's going to happen. So the first three bits are the op code and these help determine what operation is going to be selected. There are eight operations given the fact that you have three bits to select from. The next four bits are the immediate. Now there's only one operation that I have programmed that uses the immediate, but this is a way to pass data in directly from the user into the computer. Now the next two sets of three bits are the register selects. We have eight registers total, so that's why we need three bits. And if we're using an operation that only uses one register, we only use the first select. If we do an operation that uses two, we use both of the selects. Now the final set of three bits is the destination register. Once again, we have eight registers. And once we complete an operation, we want to store data in this location. Now the final switch over here is something that I called uh, the register lock. And this was just because we kept having an issue with also something that I called flickering, which I will cover a little bit later. This is to basically lock the registers and enable the register locations to go through. And then the final switch over here is actually our trigger. So once we have all of this set our registers locked, we can flip this switch and send the message in to have the operation complete. Now the way that this all works is relatively complex, but I'm gonna do my best to kind of explain it as best as I can. So the opcode select and the, the registers are pretty much the same. There's a three input AND gate. Uh, the registers have a fourth input, which is just that register lock. If you trace this wire down, it just goes to the top input on each of these gates, um, just to effectively act as an enable signal. But for the most part, there are three input AND gate that indexes through each of the different possibilities. So this one is enabled when 000 is active, this is 001, 010, 011, and as an example, you can kind of see this start to trigger through as we flip these switches. So that goes to the next input, this goes to the third input, that goes to the fourth, and then this is how we get to the fifth. It's just counting up in binary, and that allows us to pass a uh, signal through these gem spark blocks just to indicate which select we are currently on. And that's the exact same for all these registers over here. Um, they are, once again, the effectively three input AND gates that you have to select between. And only when you lock the registers does the signal actually go through for something that, again, I'll discuss in just a moment. Now up here is where we have our registers. There are eight of them and they are each four bits wide as I had previously mentioned. And there is a little bit of unique behavior behind these registers because we need to make sure that we wanted to store data continuously between each and individual uh, input to our risk computer while at the same time allowing us to clear them with a clear command should we opt to do so. Now the way that that happens is we have these green wires going to each of our individual bits of all the different registers. So for example, this one goes to the least significant bit of every single register. And those are our data lines. So we pass the data to every single register, but this top input to the AND gate comes from what is the register enable. And that's a combination of the op code, the register select, and then the trigger button to make sure that we actually want to store data at the current time. And once we do so, that passes to an OR gate, which then feeds right back through to this AND gate. So after we store the data, we're going to trigger this AND gate to basically stay on as long as this lamp is enabled. And this lamp gets cleared when we actually go through our reset sequence, so this AND gate turns off, so this OR gate no longer has data coming through it, and then this shuts everything off. So it's a little interesting cycle, and we can definitely see an example of it later. Now over here is where we have the actual data select broken out. So when we use the register select to pick a different register that we want to pull the data from, that's what these individual AND gates represent. One of the lamps on the AND gate is going to be represented by the register select, which currently is disabled right now, which is why you don't see anything. And then the other one is actually coming from, do we have data in that current register? Which once again, I will walk through an example of it and it's going to make a lot more sense when I do so. Now, all of the data from our register selects are passed into our operations that we have all the way on the right side. Now, the two inputs that are on the top of each of these gates to all of our operations are effectively the trigger from the start of the risk computer to make sure that we want to go through all of our operations, and then the op code. So that allows us to make sure that we want the actual operation to go underway, as well as making sure that we actually have that operation selected. The other input or two is effectively what do we actually want to do with 
this specific operation. So as you can see, these two gates right here represent AND, so this is our AND operation. We have an OR gate that feeds to this input right here, aside from the other two of our trigger and our opcode, as I previously mentioned. So this is our OR operation. Now I do have this little effectively riser um, coming off the top that's a, an always on input. Uh, and that's just because I need some space between the wiring to make sure that none of them crossed or got too finicky or anything like that. Now here we have our invert. So right now all of our inputs are on and when they do actually receive a signal from our register select, they will flip that so it will turn off. Right here we have our bit shift left. So the first input is actually wired to here, sec the, the second is to here, third is to here, and then the fourth gets dropped and this stays as a zero. Um, over here we have our display. So we select all of the data that we need and we effectively just pass it off to our display feature to turn on what, what si whatever signal it is. And then down here is where we have addition. Now this is pretty standard. Um, this is just the single count um, it's a half adder feeding into full adders um, for the rest of them. So it is roughly switched around rather than being the least significant over here. It's actually the least significant over here just so I could cascade the signal all the way through. And I did have to add in a little bit of delays here just because if there was something that was triggering it, it would, if I flipped the register too quickly, it would cause this to turn off but it flipped if it flipped to a register that was also on it would have an instantaneous turn off then back on which would actually only trigger once rather than twice and in doing so that's what was the flickering event that i mentioned i kept seeing so it was definitely beneficial just to add in a little bit of delay as well as that register lock feature just to make sure that there was no behavior that was happening erratically and i could effectively time the circuit on a fake clock signal so to speak so that's exactly what you see here. Again, this is the adder and then all the inputs also pass out. Now the, the outputs from each of these operations feed all the way through a very, very large series of OR gates. And then these OR gates just feed the data back into our registers. So once the destination register has been selected and we actually enable our computer to, to run, that's where we take the data from the operation and then feed it basically back into our registers to once again, restore the data. Now, that's pretty much the main overview of the operation of the RISC computer. Um, we can definitely do a little bit of an example and kind of talk about it as we go through it to hopefully give you guys a better understanding. All right, so the operations that we have available to us are add an immediate, and, or invert, add to registers, bit shift left, display, and clear. Now that's only because I've programmed them in, but we can certainly expand that if we wish to add uh, future functionality, but because we only have eight, those are the eight that I decided to prioritize the most. So let's start by adding an immediate. We're going to add 0, 1, 0, 1. We're going to choose to store this in register location 0, 0, 0, and I'm going to trigger our registers. Now each of them is at 0, 0, 0, um, which is why you see all of the, reg the register selects being right there. I'm then going to trigger our risk computer. And if we hop right up top, we can definitely see that 0101 has been written to our zeroth register. And the reason this happens is because right over here, we now have our computer, our computer enabled allowed. We have our opcode allowed. And then we have this register selected as our last input to our AND gate. All these other registers have not been selected, which is why data has not been written there. And as you can see, data coming in is a zero for the first, for the most significant bit, a one for the next bit, a zero for the next bit, and then a one for the least significant bit, which is why we have 0101 actually written. And when we turn off our enable, these switch these AND gates right here are gonna turn off, but because we have the upper AND gate on into our OR gate, that's how we actually use it to preserve the data. And when we decide to clear it later, this input is gonna clear, which turns it off entirely. So for now, just to add a little bit more data that we can do some fun things with, I'm going to add one other item to our register locations, and that is going to be 0011, and I'm going to add this instead to register location one. So as you can see, when we enable our registers, our red destination register has incremented one. And that's just because we chose to select a different one to store it in this time, while our select registers have both stayed the same. So once again, I'm going to enable it. I'm just gonna turn it off real fast just so that we don't have to worry too much about data corruption or anything like that. But you can see that 0011 has been stored in the next location. And now what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna use the AND operation, which is 001, and we're going to AND register location 000, register location 001, and we're gonna store it in register location 010. 
Now, once again, when I lock the registers, you'll see that our destination has incremented to the second register. Our first select is still at zero, and our second select is now at location one. So when we trigger this to happen, we can go and examine what exactly is going on behind the scenes. So in our select register location, we can see that the first input has only received an enable at the location which we specified, which is the zeroth register. So that enable is on, that enable is on, that enable is on, and that enable is on. For the second set of data, we only have the register location for the first register selected, which is there, 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 and there. Now, the, having the enables is not enough. We can only actually trigger these AND gates where we have data. So as you can see, this doesn't have data, this has data, no data, this has data. So it mimics 0101 to 0101, and then we can pass this data in differently. Down here, you can see that 0011 mimics our first register, which is 0011. And once again, we can use this to now pass into our inputs. And input for AND is right up here. Now the top two bits to our AND gates are all enabled because this is our trigger the risk computer and then we have our opcode select. If we take a look at all these other inputs we have our trigger from the risk computer all enabled but we don't have our opcode selected which is why these operations are not actually going underway. Now here this is the AND gate so it's zero for the first bit. We do have one enabled in the second bit but we don't have the other one, so this doesn't actually trigger. Same thing with the second bit. And then with the least significant bit, that's where we actually have an overlap, which triggers our AND gate, and then we pass that data back. Now you can kind of take a look at some of the other inputs. So this is OR. If we had or them, it would have been 0111, which is correct. If you had decided to invert the first input, it would have been 1010, which is also correct. We would have displayed 0101 and various stuff like that. And in addition, we will come back to because that is going to be our final uh, register change. Now all this data feeds back around into our inputs as data. So we can see that we only have data coming in on the 0001. And once again, this feeds through the list to our second register where we now have all of our enables triggered and we actually store 0001 in the proper location. And that's our AND. Now the next thing that I am going to do, as I had mentioned, is I am going to do addition. So we are gonna do addition of our same inputs just because, again, they're the more interesting ones. So I'm going to unlock a register. We're gonna store it in location number three this time. And I do need to change the opcode to add, which is 100 or the fourth opcode. So once again, locking our registers, we can see that the register locations have changed. And then flipping our switch, is basically going to do the exact same thing that we have kind of taken a look at. It will feed it through some adders. And as you can see, this is our fourth register and we have one plus one is zero, carry the one. One zero one is zero, carry the one. One plus one is zero, carry the one. So we only have a one in our most significant bit location. And we can convert this to base 10 if we just want to verify that it works. So 0101 is 5 in base 10, 0011 is 3 in base 10, 5 plus 3 is 8, 1000 is 8 in base 10 as well. And that is the result of going through our carries and our, sorry, our half adders into our full adders that we kind of discussed very briefly over here. Um, so this is a lot more complicated and I'm not going to walk through it because this is very well documented. So if you are interested in how half adders and full adders work, definitely go take a, take a peek at them because they are very, very interesting. So now I'm going to turn off our enable, I'm going to turn off our registers. And now we're going to actually display a solution. So say we wanted to display the, the solution to that addition problem that we just did. We are then going to select our opcode for display. We are going to use the first select register because this is no longer a destination. This is now something that we are going to select. So we're going to select location 011. We're going to lock our registers. And when we go to display, we now see 1000 depicted here. And that once again is because this triggers our data to select the register uh, 1000. We feed it into our display feature which feeds it all the way back and then goes and triggers our actual display right over here. So 1000 is what we want to pick. Now the last thing that we're going to do is we're just going to clear all the registers real fast just to make sure that once again we, we keep track of everything. Um, all of this stuff doesn't matter, but we can select 111, which is our clear feature, enable our registers, flip the switch, 
And once again, as I had mentioned, you can see that the top input to all of these go out, which prevents the OR gate from actually being on. So the data effectively disappears. And then when I were to, if I were to turn this computer back off, you can see in the top right, very, very small, those, those little lights come back on. So we can now allow data to be written again. And that's the complete operation. So once again, this build was really, really cool to work on. I like building the computers and, and games just because for the sake of why not. Um, so this did take quite a while, so by all means, please give this a, a like or a comment if you're interested in more type of this content. Um, I really do like building this type of stuff, and frankly, it's it's kind of cool to see all of it come together and try to actually make a computer in a game that really doesn't need a computer in it, but why not? So thank you all for watching. I hope you get it, did enjoy the video. Um, by all means, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Have a good rest of your day, evening, and or night, and take it easy.